I want to move on now. Interesting developments in the Trump document case yesterday. The former president's attorneys are asking for a reasonable delay in the trial's start date until after the 2024 election or at least until after the GOP primaries. Joining us now for more on this, former Trump attorney and executive director for the ACLJ, Jordan Seculo, back with us. Jordan, good morning. Good to see you. Good morning. Um, I'm wondering what you make of this. According to Politico, the Trump team is calling for a delay before he goes to trial while he remains a candidate for president, arguing it would make it virtually impossible to seat an impartial jury. Now, we know this has been all over the news for the last several weeks. Do they do they have a case here? They, they do. And I think that there's a couple things to point out. The trial is different than all the pre-trial issues that we could face here, which are very complicated. And I think where they point out is that those alone, the appeals on each document that you have to go through, the Classified Information Procedures Act, which is a three-step process. And if there's 31 of those documents, that's 31 separate times on different kinds of court review, different analysis. What is it going to be released? Is it going to be a summary? That's just going to some of the basic evidence uh, that, of course, if you're the defendant, you ha you're supposed to have access to and it would become public. So that that's just one issue. The second issue is, of course, the constitutional issues, who declassifies the declassification power. We've talked about that a lot. It hasn't been litigated yet. So the idea is that you could still go through a lot of the issues without yet having the trial where we, you're not, you know, the two week trial with the what we're used to seeing in a courtroom. So. The defense, the prosecutors, Rob, already asked for a delay until December of this year, said they weren't going to be ready because of those complications on the documents. I think when you look at the other big issues, uh, there's a real case to be made that uh, not even getting to the jury issue yet, which is a, a separate issue, too, because right. of the impartial jury, just the document issue alone here could take over a year. Could I just a quick question about that since you brought up the jury? So the court of public opinion, I think, yep. is, you know, this is going to be very difficult to your point to find an impartial jury. I'm hearing that maybe the Trump team foregoes uh, 12 jurors and, and just has this, you know, before a judge, a bench trial. Could they do that? Because the merits of this case uh, seem so ridiculous to the Trump team that maybe they go in that direction. Yeah, you could. And I mean, I think that the issue here is, is obviously you're a public figure, but this is different than even being a public figure like a celebrity. You were, the, you were a former president currently running. I mean, that was their big point in, the, in this filing, in this motion, was that right now, because he's in an adversarial public role where he's running for president, a primary where he's going to be attacked by fellow Republicans, and right. then is going to be in a bigger nomination. Potentially, he's the leading nominee, likely will be the nominee, it looks like, if things were held today. And then he's going to be in this uh, this huge adversarial process where people are obviously very divided on whether or not they support him. That shouldn't bleed into whether or not uh, he should be found guilty on this very technical issue of these documents. And Jordan, we keep hearing how all his candidates are banking on there being a trial uh, that would prevent him from, from running. Right. Uh, I think the exact opposite. I think if there's a trial while the GOP primary is happening or the general election, that makes Donald Trump more of a martyr and helps him even more We'll see what happens. I um, want to play you a soundbite. This is Chris Christie, who's running for president. He says Donald Trump is scared of going to jail. If we offer you a plea, which I'm certain they will, mm -hmm. and you turn it down, mm -hmm. and you take us to trial, and you're convicted, that judge is sending you to jail. And I think that's what he mm -hmm. goes to bed every night thinking. Every night. And all this bravado and everything else, I've known him for 22 years. When I was doing these cases in New Jersey and I would put political figures in jail, he would say to me, I could never do that. I could never go to jail. And I'm telling you, no matter what he says, no matter how he's bragging and, and going on and on about him not being afraid, he goes to bed every night thinking about the sound of that jail cell door climbing, closing behind him. All right. About 30 seconds. Yeah. Uh, anything yeah. to that? Or is this Chris yeah. Christie trying to get attention again? It's Chris Christie trying to get attention. I mean, he was someone looking for a job in the Trump White House. And now he's, you know, the Mr. Anti-Trump uh, to run in New Hampshire and try to get some traction there with moderate voters who, who don't like the American first agenda. Uh, listen, this comes out. Donald Trump's going to be on trial likely in March on a criminal trial in a district court in New York. It's not federal, but it's a state criminal charge. I mean, we don't forget Alvin Bragg. I don't think he's going to bed at night worried about that. I think he's going to bed at night worrying about the American people and planning his campaign and doing what most of us couldn't do and keep up with the schedule that he does. Yeah. All right. Jordan Seculo, appreciate you breaking that down for us. Good to see you this morning. Thank you. Thanks, Rob.